Okay, so I wasted a bunch of time cleaning the dyno up and giving it a paint job. I don't know, but at least now it's all fresh. I checked the torque at all the bearings and whatnot. And I pulled the mainline dyno log pieces out of the box just to see what we're going on. Now there's a whole bunch of data logging stuff. There's some EGTs, thermocouples, RPM module. But here I'm just showing you the basic components of the core of the system is what I would call it, I guess. Uh, the stuff that gets upgraded. So uh, we'll start over at the dyno bed. You, under the center cover is this box and this is the old dyno dynamics, uh, you know, main board or whatever you want to call it. And then to do the switch over, you do the mainline Dynalog board goes in there. It's pretty well plug and play, power ground, the harness, and there's a couple other things. It's all well labeled. I'm sure it's going to be pretty uh, straightforward. And then from your dyno bed, you've got the cord that normally, you know, the heavy duty corrugated thing that goes to the dyno bed. It carries power, or sorry, to the cabinet. It carries power and it also carries the little communications connector. So what Mainline does is provides this uh, conversion harness. So you go from what you've got to use your existing cable and then it gives you their kind of outputs. And that integrates with their little central, I don't know what it's called, but like central hub. And this is the little dealie where all your inputs and outputs go. So if you've got, you know, eight EGTs, eight wind bands, two pressure, whatever you want. I mean, it's got lots of stuff built in and then 54, I think, additional channels for logging. And then through that ribbon cable in the corner, it communicates to your new Windows 7 PC. Now, normally I think they supply the PC. Normally they supply the PC, um, from what I understand, but I'm, I'm cheap and uh, it's bulky to ship all the way from Australia. <laughs> so Todd just sent me the card. So I'll install that in my Windows 7 machine and we're good to go. Now everything that was in your old cabinet, um, you don't need anything else. Uh, you don't need the main computer, uh, wideband unit, uh, anything that was in there, you just, I guess you can just toss it out or sell it or keep it, I don't know. So I'm going to reuse the cabinet, put all the new stuff in there, and that should be it. Okay, so very quickly I'm going to start just uh, pulling apart the, you know, the, the Dino Dynamics original board. Just wanted to show you kind of quickly what um, what's going on. So the inputs over here that I've pulled off already, uh, this one that was plugged in over there, that was to your old load cell. Basically you're just going to take the wire colors, match them up to what you've got uh, on the new board. Uh, I'm installing a new load cell on mine, but... Uh, you don't have to, I guess. Uh, the input that was in here, that was to the uh, thermistor. That's like the emergency shutdown, I guess, if the retarder uh, overheats. Um, and these are the speed sensor wires. Um, they went here from the uh, from the speed sensor on the rollers. I guess there's two different styles. There's a two and a three wire. Mine's is just a two wire. So in that case, on, on the, you'll see later on the mainline board, you're just gonna, hook them up to the signal and, and ground wires. Uh, moving on over here, you can see where the power comes into the cabinet, it's this big gray wire, or into the box. It screws down to the uh, thyristor that's underneath, I, I presume. And then also from, from there, we have two jumper wires coming back out, uh, blue and brown, I think, these two. And they come over here to the little uh, fuses or circuit breakers or whatever. And the output of those goes to a plug on the back of the box. And this is what ends up going back to your cabinet to power your cabinet. So we have to hook all that back up. But just a quick overview of, of what's involved. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect everything. Uh, pull the PC out. Uh, pull the uh, PC board out and uh, go from there. Okay, so we got the dyno PC board done. So we're just gutting the, the cabinet, getting it ready for... All the new stuff, so we're just taking all the old crap out and uh, kind of clean that up. It's a little dusty. 
All right, just installed the card in, in one of the empty PCI slots, and there's the ribbon connector in the back. And we can put the PC back together. All right, so here's the back of the cabinet. Got everything installed and wired up, and everything works and appears good. So we've got the PC on the bottom, the ribbon cable that controls it to the card. Pretty straightforward, everything else plugs into the uh, Dynalog uh, box. Uh, upwards I've got stored some of my sensors, I'll show you the other side. The stuff that I'm not going to use on a kind of daily basis, I just sort of tucked in under here. I've got a computer power supply, an extra one that I had kicking around. Kind of wired that to supply power to my widebands because kind of wanted to keep everything powered off 220 inside the inside the cabinet and that's that's your only power source so a computer one you just flick a switch or some of them you don't even have to and they they just work so pretty happy so far everything's going good Todd got her all calibrated and set up so we'll put everything away clean up and here's start the dialing some cars front quickly I um, clean up the cabinet this <laughs> many years of dust in the corner there, the stuff that I'm going to use on a regular basis, I got the uh, TAC box, uh, injector probe, and then on top there I built a little, you know, power distribution, because my wide bands, I always put a cigarette lighter on them, so that I can put them in the car if I have to or whatever, and then I got eight. Uh, I used RCA cables as inputs, just so, you know, quick and easy, single plug in, plug out for the stuff I use. I only got two cigarette lighters because realistically 99% of the stuff I do, I'm only running two wide bands anyway. So that's good enough. And then down here I got the PC, the Windows 7 machine with the box and again my spare stuff. And I put the printer down there. Or maybe up top if there's room, I don't know yet. So all uh, looks good. I'm going to just put everything back now and good to go.